have covered in earlier, uh, almost a year ago in a video, but I, I did it as a comedy, as kind of a spoof. And actually, it's way too serious a subject to be doing comedy on. And that is the way the Church of Scientology use your confessional data to retaliate against you. I think it's an important subject I should talk about. It's very important, yes. There's a very dear friend of mine whose kids have been estranged by the church. And she was born with a minor, a minor foot variation. And the only people she ever talked about it was the church in her confessional folders. And when she left the church and has been quite high profile asking for her kids back, they put up hate websites on her and mocked this very minor foot problem straight out of her PC folders to push her button. There was a sort of confessional. Stuart asked for all sorts of information about my background and anything that I was um, upset about or embarrassed about or I felt was holding me on the line. And uh, I divulged all sorts of stuff that I would not normally tell anybody. In fact, stuff that I've not told anybody up until that point. That confession was to have serious consequences for Alex. After he left the cult, he was pestered for six months with letters and calls. Then they discovered he'd instructed a solicitor to take legal action to get his money back. Within the next couple of days, we had a letter from the mission. Um, that was not very pleasant. The letter referred to the secrets that Alex had divulged, suggesting the way out for you could be to honestly confess everything you did to your wife and the police and suffer the consequences. It's unbelievable. People go to a Catholic priest. They know that. They talk to the priest. They relieve themselves of their secrets. And that's the end of it. The Catholic Church would never build a hate website on you and go to the priest and find out what you said? Can you, can you see what the Church of Scientology is like as an entity? It's a revenge entity. You step out of line, you blow the whistle, and they will take your deepest, darkest secrets out of your confessional and mock it. Let me tell you, on this subject of confessionals, when you sit one-on-one -on -one with a counselor, you are on videotape from beginning to end. That session is taped. And there's a band of little execs that can, in a, in a kind of bank of video monitors, plug in and watch you at any given moment. And there was there was something in it that caught my eye, and I wanted to mention it because in those articles, they, they talked very clearly about how the fact that every confessional, every auditing room is wired. There's, there's cameras in there. I don't know how many parishioners know that as they're sitting down to, to audit that anyone, well, David Miscavige or, or anyone that he uh, approves is able to listen in at will any time. There was an anecdote about one wife saying goodbye to her husband who was leaving and they met in a room at Gold and she embraced him and whispered to him the room is bugged. They're listening to everything that we say.
pole mounted. <laughs> this priest pennant and thing is bogus, absolute bogus. It isn't just priest penitent. This isn't some. I think in the Laura Wolf, in the Laura de Crescenzo case, how many people did it was, they admit? It was something like 80 people could see folders. Oh, but, but, it's a lot more than that. They admitted to 168 oh, people, correct. something like yeah, that, lot, yeah. actually studied her folders. So there is, it, priest penitent is a joke. But every single word you said is taped. People are not aware. They pretend that the taping is for training. correction and yeah. training and monitoring for quality control, bogus. Now, it's actually spelt out in church doctrines to look into what you've been saying. And the moment you step out, I've used the word emotional blackmail. There's a ton of people out there who've withdrawn from the church but won't speak out. And they are worried that some embarrassing thing they gave out in a session will be used against them. One thing that the church luxuriate and embellish on is sexual matters. They absolutely build hate sites around a person's sexuality. And they make a big, it, it's an obsession with the church. You, you would think <laughs> there was no other game in town than sex. The church liked to use lurid tabloid sexual private matters and blow this up and um, use this on hate tabloid websites. Meanwhile, the Sea Organization are determined to find out everything they can about Ali. She has to answer some very personal questions. I had to list all of my sexual partners, everything I did with them, how many times, very, very detailed information. And I queried that because I was quite upset about that and they said it was um, there to help me. You know, it, people wonder, why does the church have so many enemies? Why, why, why is there such an uproar about this church? Well, I will tell you that when you betray someone's trust and you take out what they've said in a confessional session, and not only emotionally blackmail, but put it on the internet, make it into, into internet business. Just look at the fact that the church has actually taken money to get your secrets in a so-called religious therapy, but hoard these folders as a kind of blackmail material to get you if you step out of line. They love to cozy up to other religions in interfaith conferences, but actually other religions don't carry on like this. Who carries on like this? Who carries on like this? Who builds, who builds hate websites based on what you told in the confidentiality or sanctity of an auditing session? that you paid $500 to $1,000 an hour for? Blackmail material.